Big rocks. Buongiorno and welcome to Sardinia, the land of the magical little fish. And uh, I don't know if that's true, by the way. Here we are on the brand new Multistrada V4 Rally launch. And uh, the bikes are all lined up. We're just getting our stuff together. I'll go through a little bit in a second. I'll just give you a little bit of a, a lowdown. I'm on a red bike today, but the, the real deal is the black spec that's for this is which is I'll just show you this one now and then I'll go and run through my bike this is the one with the brushed aluminium tank which looks absolutely gorgeous and it, it's yeah it makes the difference it makes this bike look like a proper rally spec machine but anyway I didn't get to ride that one I'm on the red one so um, let's go and have a look quick look around that before we have our briefing and uh, head off out into these beautiful roads uh, and we're going to do quite a bit of off-roading today. I'm not sure it's going to be super serious off-roading, which is good because I'm not really an off-road person. Where's my bike? There he is. She is. So, after the briefing last night, this is not just a, a V4 Multistrada with a big tank. There's a lot, a lot of extra details that have gone into making this uh, a real let's face it, a GS competitor, because I think that's what it's aimed at, uh, is taking that market share away from BMW. And looking at the specs, I think it's going to be a pretty, pretty, uh, pretty good job of doing so. So I'll also just say how nice it is to be on a launch and have panniers uh, to be able to put all my crap in. So today's going to be great. Oh, and I can charge my cameras and stuff via the USB cooled pocket. We'll get onto that in a minute. Anyway, see you in a bit. Bye. Right, we're on. Last minute Faffridges. Faffridges. If I had a uh, department store, I'd call it Faffridges. I'm actually really looking forward to this. This is potentially my new bike. Right then, so here we go. The Multistrada V4 Rally. And um, you'll be forgiven for thinking this is just a normal Multistrada V4 or V4S with a large tank. It's not. There's a lot of work's gone into this, and I'll try and remember everything from the press briefing last night. But they've done a lot of work, a lot of work. The, the, the most obvious thing is the tank. So this is a, now a 30 litre tank. And not only is it a 30 litre tank, this bike's now got the rear cylinder cut off to help improve efficiency. And they reckon it's an 8% engine efficiency improvement over the last bike. Uh, the cylinder cut only cuts off under 3,800 RPM, I think. So depending on how you test it, it's probably not gonna make that much difference. But amazingly, this, the, the tank size, it's, it doesn't look that much bigger. What they've done is they've changed the material, so, and they've made the, the walls of the tank much, much thinner. And amazingly, that's created this sort of phantom space from somewhere. Uh, on the black bikes, you can see this beautiful brushed aluminium vibe. So that's a, a very practical thing for this bike because the range <laughs> in previous tests has not been ideal. And I think for me, that's what was the primary reason it let, it let the bike down for me, was you just couldn't, you just feel, felt like you couldn't go that far on it. But they've addressed that now with the tank range. So it's still a thirsty bike, don't get me wrong, but it's, a much, it's, a, it's, it's now bearable and usable. Look at this. Obviously, this, the new Multistradas have got the 19-inch front wheel. These wheels, again, are not the same as the spoked wheels you can spec on the V4 S and standard V4. This is a, a whole new Enduro spec wheel, which is over three keys lighter. We've got improved passenger comfort. We'll get onto that later. I think we're going to get a, uh, a pillion to sit on the back. They really have tried to tackle some of the traditional 
Ducati attitudes of, <coughs> of, of all out sportiness and this really is aimed now squarely at the touring, wealthy touring market. We've got 30 mil higher ground clearance in the suspension to help with the off-road ability. Not that many people are going to take these off-road, but we've seen with the GS Adventure that that's just what, that's the ruggedness and that's what people want, is the, just to know that they can. Again with the off-road, we've got a switchable rear brake pedal, so it helps when you're standing up on the bike. The tank grip has been redesigned to help with this. All the aero of the screen has been redesigned. And I must say, at this speed, even in the low position, I've got very little buffeting. It's nice. Woohoo! And it's still quick. <laughs> so a lot of the modifications to this bike have been aimed at comfort, but they've tried to just make it a little more user-friendly and less tiring. Like, it's, it really is about mileage, this. Mileage and trust. They go on about trust a lot. And people having faith and, and I, I guess this is this is all coming from a lot of it's coming from the Audi owner Audi group ownership of, of Ducati these days is trying to get rid of that old stigma that Ducatis can't go very far and they break down a lot this bike now and has come with four years warranty for a, for quite a while now I think it's called uh, Multistrada forever or something uh, which is a fantastic feat to have a four-year warranty uh, that really does put a lot of faith in the machine likewise the valve clearance check in this now is 60,000 kilometers <laughs> which is a long way and the service intervals are 15,000 kilometers for oil change or two years respectively the bikes today are specced with panniers crash bars um, how you would actually spec them to go touring and riding, which is which is nice. It's not just like a, they haven't just gone, oh yeah, we're a superbike, power, exhilaration, glory. It's like actually let's let's try and get our bikes to be used and be seen as being versatile tools, which is exactly what this feels like it is. <laughs> but it's still 170 brake horsepower. The weight of the rally has gone up 20 kilos, but that's a lot of that is, is practical stuff like side stands, bars, etc. Um, so I'm not going to begrudge it that. I think it still sits at 240 k's. <laughs> this is more like it. Bellissimo, bellissimo. And this is in touring mode, so this is same horsepower in touring mode but it, the throttle connection is a little softer again it's about ease of use ease of riding even when it comes to pillions they've changed how the the panniers mount onto the rail and the top box to give the pillion more space so <laughs> there's been a lot of redesign gone into this bike it's, it's really not just put a bigger tank on it and it's not unbearable power, this, in touring. It's, it's actually nice. I mean, some would argue why you need 170 brake horsepower on something like this. I mean, the answer is you don't, but it's nice to have it. So then having the ability to turn the intensity down just to get on with your day is a really nice one. That was my complaint over the KTM. It was just sort of, it was too fiery. It was just too racy, it was too much. And sometimes you just, when you've got to do five, six hundred miles in a day, you just need to get on with it and not be tired. <laughs> There's a shed load of different seating configurations. A lot of them are low, low seats. I mean, I'm on the standard seat in the low position. I think I might change it to go into the high position. I, I personally think the seating on this bike is really low, but they do a lower seat and an ultra low seat. So if you are worried uh, about the titchiness or the size of this thing, then don't be. It's also got a, uh, a little button, which I'll try and demonstrate later. I think it's that one there, the suspension preload, where if you're worried about not flat footing, you can push it in traffic and it just instantly takes the uh, the height out of the bike. 
so you can put your feet down and feel more comfortable. So there's loads of stuff like that, which is really intelligent features. I mean, ergonomically, this feels almost bang on perfect, to be honest with you. There's quite a lot of adjustment in the bars. You can undo these, this clamp and roll it. <laughs> there's another nice little feature on this bike. There's some ducts down here, which look a bit like Moto G GP spec. Um, downforce ducts, but actually what they are is, is leg coolers. So you can open a flap and, uh, and get your legs cool. Because when you've got panniers on, you do sometimes on these big touring bikes, get a, um, a, a, a sort of, you get trapped in a, a pocket of warm air. So that's a nice feature. And of course, we've got that delicious V4 soundtrack to accompany us on our lonely wilderness journeys across the globe. I mean, dynamically at the moment, this is a bit too soft for me. It's a bit too soft. Which, um, which is a good sign because I found the standard S um, a bit too racy. So hopefully we can stiffen it up with a bit of buttonage in a minute. Um, I mean, I've had worse days. Lovely flipper action. Beautiful upshifts. Downshifts a little harsh. <laughs> oh, bella, bella. This screen has been designed, redesigned in a wind tunnel. Of course, we've got radar on this bike as well. I think that comes with all of the spec bikes now. I mean, I, I, it's a nice feature to have, but um, whether, the, well, in the last test we've done, it, it does tend to pick up riders behind and it flashes quite a lot. So, but I haven't seen it flashing, unless I've been really unobservant. I haven't seen it flashing today and there's a rider right up my chuff. So um, maybe they've resolved that. We've got a beautiful dashboard. We've got a, uh, a phone charging pocket down in here. Uh, you can see that, I don't know if you can see with my camera pointed right on the top of my head. Um, but we've in, inside that there's obviously a wired uh, USB socket that by all accounts is waterproof. And the other thing that they've done this year is they've made it air cooled. So <laughs> it does actually get some cooling in there because sometimes you charge your phone in this big black heavy box and uh, it overheats, so <laughs> they've resolved that. Again, another nice little touring touch. It, I don't think many people are gonna go and buy this pretty expensive bike. We haven't been told how much it is just yet. I'll put it on the screen now. Uh, and go and rag the shit out of it round wilderness lanes. I don't think that's gonna happen. Exactly the same as that, that people buy the GS Adventure for. Very few people actually go adventuring on them. It's the, well, from, from being an adventure customer that does exactly that, <laughs> like just all the gear, no idea. It's about feeling that the bike has got a rugged and unstoppable attitude and it's there if you need it, which this now, feels like it does have that does have that rugged ability particularly in black although it does have a beautiful brushed aluminium tank which I'm not sure is entirely rugged and again these brushed alley panels on the side which are probably going to get uh, scratched and, and all that sort of stuff it's almost a bit too beautiful to attach dirty luggage to I mean, I'm getting very little wind buffeting here, and is that Carbinieri? And this screen is in low position. I know we're not going super fast at the moment. It is Carbinieri. Uh, there's various specs available, as you'd expect, um, with heated seats, heated grips. Obviously, you've got to pay through the nose for those things. But I think if you you can afford a uh, one of these in the first place, you're probably going to spec it pretty decent. Of course, ac uh, ad ad adaptive cruise control, as in the last one with the radar. <laughs> oh, one annoying thing. Um, 
it's, it's, it's quite minor, but it can be annoying. Like this morning, just getting in and out of the panniers. You can't unlock a pannier and leave it unlocked. So when I was trying to decant stuff from one side to the other and figure out my faff levels, um, you have to put the key in, turn it, unlock it, and then you, it, it, it's a bit frustrating and annoying. You can't leave it unlocked and latch closed. It has to be locked, so you have to take the key out, which is a keyless key. So it's just a bit of a bit of faffery. That's, a, that's my <laughs> my only minor criticism at this point, which is pretty minor. Other than that, this <laughs> at this stage could be my next bike. Well, I'll tell you what. Let's go into mode and let's go back into let's go into urban just for a second because again this takes the uh, the jerk out of the chicken and uh, it's a very comfortable I think we're at like 130 brake horsepower now but it's it's a, it's a supremely comfortable way to ride actually so this is where if you just need to get to work or it's rainy and miserable just stick it in urban I must say I'm not really feeling the weight of these panniers at this point either, which again was a, a slight criticism of the S, the, the, the S Multistrada and the standard one. They've, they've done a lot of prep into how to make this bike work loaded, which is why in the past I've always gone for a GS, because that's the one that you can strap, like just, it just works with a big load of luggage on it. Uh, what else is there? Centre stand, that's where a lot of the weight comes from as well. Again, super useful, super useful. Even for just loading luggage on and off the bike. I hate putting luggage on when it's on, off on the, on the piss. Or just for taking sexy pictures, that's good. But, you know, even if you need to change a tyre or do something, or even just clean a wheel, it's so much nicer to have a centre stand. So, so far, I'm very impressed. I do wish, however, Ducati would change their grips. I just, I hate these grips. They feel like they're made of really hard plastic. And that it just feels like you've got a, you know, you've just gone to Argos and bought a balance bike and these are the grips that come with it. I really wish they changed these. Again, at night, the switch gear's nice, laid out. Oh, boys, 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 boys. Okay, we're in sport now. Hey! <laughs> Now this is nice. <laughs> oh yeah, I, and I've forgotten I've got panniers on. That's how nice it is. It would be nice to have a bit more of a booming soundtrack, but I don't know if the Acre exhaust actually sounds that much better. But it's fast enough, I tell thee that. And these are on like a semi knobbly sort of tyre, not a knobbly tyre, but like a, a dual sport tyre, I guess you'd probably call it. A Scorpion Trail somethings. So it's definitely got a bit more movement than you would normally have. <laughs> on an S22 or something, whatever you put on this A41. Oh. Feel the electronics. I want to turn the wheelie control off or down because oh, neutral. So I want to feel the, the power more, but it is very nice. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's still soft. It's still a big bike, but it's kind of in the same way that. These big enduro bikes are kind of fun to wallow and muscle around into corners. This has still got that weight, you can certainly feel it. I still prefer to be on a bike like this, carrying stuff and finding the limit earlier than on a Panigale or something, racing through here, because that would just be a nightmare. I mean, I presume we're uh, going the right way. I haven't seen another rider for a while. Oh, right. Nice. So just quickly while we're stopped. So this tank here, I don't know if you can see with the thing, all aluminium, tall shoulders, slightly broader here. This is actually a standard Multistrada V4S. So this is how the they've changed the tank. So this is actually plastic material cover with inside they have a, another actual tank. So this is how they've got the volume 
much bigger without actually changing the dimensions that much. And I think this here looks actually a lot nicer, broader, stronger, bigger, longer. Right, I've just taken um, wheelie control off in sport mode and I looked up my notes and that's pretty much it that I can remember that I can uh, talk about. And those ducts, by the way, on the, you can see that on the, these ducts here. So they are on that bike, but there's a flap here. So when it rains, you can close them, which is nice. Uh, I've also just stiffened up the old, the old suspension a bit, just for my uh, 100 kilo mass. But so far, this is incredibly enjoyable. And already that suspension, I didn't even go to the hardest. I've just gone to hard. I think it's softest, soft, medium, hard, hardest. And I'm just in hard, just mildly, not full on rager. There's a bit of damping in the old boy. <laughs> this is a mega thing. Uh, love it. And what a beautiful place to ride. Come on. I mean, without, I, I could waffle on all day. I mean, I'll, I'll come back intermittently, but ultimately I think I've said everything already about this bike. It is, the, the best just got better. I mean, this, this did win our, the standard, the normal uh, V4 Multistrada won our group test last year. And this bike means it would have won it by a bigger margin. I would take this all day over the S, all day. Because everything, all, just the little things that the, the S lacked, this is now compensated for. It's everything that the S is, but with that more long-legged touring, touring approach to it. And it's still an absolute beast. <laughs> I mean, what more, really, what more could you want from a motorcycle? It's a very handsome bike, particularly in the black with the brushed aluminium tank. It's extremely fast it really is super capable and performance based and now it's got the comfort and the distance that that it lacked before not massively lacked but this is just the cherry on top now and it's it's kind of almost close to being the perfect motorcycle the, the, the criticisms i have are so minor i feel the cockpit does look a little bit plasticky and cheap after a few days of dusty riding. Like you can see all the, I don't know if you can see again on this GoPro, it's probably too high, but just take my word for it. The, the switch gear has got a bit of dust ingress and it just looks a little low spec. That's, you know, that's pretty much my only complaint so far anyway. It's, it's absolute banger. Right, so we've got a 20 kilometer off-road section now I think and uh, as you may know or may not know I am not a particularly good off-road rider so this is probably going to be slow and steady so the enduro mode has got less power it's less peakish oh a butterfly I don't want to hit you so it should be a little more forgiving on the throttle it really is masking the extra weight quite well this bike I know there's not much in the panniers. I've got backpack and camera gear and stuff like that. Uh, and and the, the extra weight of the fuel. I mean, we haven't used one dibble of fuel yet either. Here we go. Scary, <laughs> scary. Okay, we're up. We're up and on our feet. I mean, so far it's nice and tame. And I think that's that's it with this bike. You're, you're not, I don't think you're gonna go over and do like actual sort of enduro courses, are you? You're just gonna, uh, just get through stuff like this. You're not going to sort of want to go and do a massive load, but it's nice to know that when you're on your adventures, you've got a piece of equipment that can traverse this terrain. I mean, I'm, I, I could definitely do with some bar risers here. I'm, I'm struggling a little bit. Oh yeah. Oh, nice. Traction's good. Nice bit of support. Again, this is the luxury way of traveling off-road. The traction's incredible, actually. It's really, there's very little slippage from the rear wheel. And as you can see, this is a very loose surface. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> oh. 
Oh yeah, this is fun. I'm enjoying it. <laughs> oh yeah, I don't like downhill. So let's use a bit of this rear brake that's been adjusted. I mean, the balance of this bike is actually really nice. I've got to say, it's for a big heavy thing, it's, um, it's pretty decent. I mean, this is perfect for commuting South London. Controls are nice. Again, blippers and shifters and stuff, they're all nice off-road as well. And this extra 30 mil travel is definitely helping. I mean, even the big old lumps like that, that was a big old lump, and it just soaks it up. I think with this 19 inch front, oh fucking hell mate, you're right. I think with this um, 19 inch front wheel, it just soaks up the bumps. Proper nice, proper nice. I guess the only thing that's worrying me here is it's such an expensive bike. You wouldn't want to have a little whoopsie. Oh, proper loose this, cool. But yeah, very impressive so far. I mean, again, I don't know what else you'd want out of a bike. I mean, it could be lighter, but then that's, you know, you can't possibly, you, you can't have a bike that's this good at ever else and still be light. Like everything in life, it's a compromise, isn't it? Oh, ping. That's the aluminium bash plate, three millimeter aluminium for some extra ruggedness. Dilbert, Derek. <laughs> this is fucking brilliant. Whoa, I love it. It's so fast. Uh, it's got a lot of grip, this. Oh, 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 oh. Dilbert number two. <laughs> Whoa! I mean, it's pretty pretty, isn't it? <laughs> it's absolutely gorgeous. Quite fancy just had a tent on the back. You just pull over, set your tent up. Oh, get the kettle on. Fit pound a four by four. Is it a four by four? Love it, Right, well this is uh, much more gnarly than before. Oh. Lots of loose big rocks. Oh, fuck it out. Okay. Fuck me. Fuck it out. Whoa, whoa. Just got hit in the neck by a bee. I mean, this is actually quite serious off road, I think, for me anyway, on this big monster <laughs> I'm actually quite enjoying it wow look at that beautiful don't look too hard shit <laughs> okay. So in the true sense of professionalism, we're gonna try a, uh, a couple of little uh, jaunts with some pillions. Uh, we've got a selection of various pillions over here. I guess, I don't know, you choose one and stick them on and off you go. Uh, but it'd be quite an interesting little test. And the first time ever that I've put a pillion on a test bike, launch bike. So let's see, who do I get? This reminds me of something, I can't think what. Which one is mine? Who wants to come with me? No one? Oh, story of my life. Okay, hello, nice to meet you. What's your name? Esme. Esme? Yeah. Chris. Okay. Nice to meet you. So this is a, a hard day for you. You just have to drive around on people's motorbikes, yes? Yeah. Yeah? yeah. yeah. It's scary, yeah? Mm. We'll go very slow. Not so much, no. And you live in Sardinia? Yeah, I live yeah? in Sardinia. Yeah. Sardinia, how yeah. do you pronounce it? Yeah. Sa Sardinia. 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 But I'm not Sardinian. Okay. Yeah. You're just here for a big long holiday. Yeah. <laughs> here we go. We're in touring mode. We've got two helmets and some luggage on the dashboard displaying our preferred setup. And this is going to be an interesting test because one of the reasons I, in the past, preferred bikes more like a GS Adventure 
because they feel better, more uh, laden, more heavily loaded. And the Multistrada, in my opinion, in the past, has always been a bit of a singular bike and it struggles with weight. But this is already feeling pretty nice. And we're on semi-knobbly tyres as well, let's not forget. I can barely notice, uh, I've forgotten her name. I would, I, I can tell you now, I would absolutely hate to do the job that this poor girl has got. <laughs> to be sat on the back of a load of random stranger crap riders on press launches trying to show off. I absolutely hate it. So fair play to her. I can tell you we're getting a, a totally different wind uh, pass, like wind travel. It's, 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 it's different. It's much more, um, how, how you say, uh, it's definitely more blustery with a, pa with a pillion on. Let's check my passenger comfort. Okay? Yeah. It's not too fast? No, you're much faster than the others, but it's okay. Oh, okay. I'm trying to drive very slow and smooth. Yeah. Okay. Is it comfortable? Yeah, really. Yeah? Do you want to put the heated seat on? When we go past the photographer, you want to do a peace sign? If you want. Okay. <laughs> lizard. I just saw a lizard. A lizardy gizzard. Right, well, let's drop our, uh, our Doris back and um, let's try and get her back in one piece. That was okay? Yeah. Okay. Really... Okay, thank you. Yeah. Grazie. Grazie. Ciao. Ciao. We're on here, Nigel. We're on. Well, gentlemen and lady, all of you ladies watching, um, it doesn't get much better than this. We're in Sardinia. We've been all morning on this new Ducati Multistrada V4 rally. And I've got to say, this is very close to perfection for me. Dynamically, it's, I, I much prefer it over the uh, standard V4S Multistrada. It, it, that, it's always been a bit too focused on race and a bit too focused on performance. You still get all that performance and premium quality, parts, Brembo brakes, 170 brake horsepower, you still get all of that. But in this package, it just seems to be much more versatile and usable now. They've thought it's not just about, they put a bigger tank on it. This is, which is 30 liters by the way, and aluminium. Uh, it's not just a, a normal V4S Multistrada with a bigger tank. They've, they've increased the ground clearance. It's got new wheels, brand new wheels, three kilos lighter than the old wheels. Uh, they've moved a lot of the uh, luggage and stuff back, so pillion comfort. And even on these tyres, which are a, a semi-off-road knobbly tyre, this thing absolutely chews up the mountain. It is, it is fantastic. Uh, and then moving on to off-road, which I don't know how many of you are actually going to ride something like this off-road. It's a very expensive machine. Uh, we're yet to get the UK price. I'll put it in the description now. Uh, but I know it's going to be it's 25 grand-ish, probably something like that, by the time you put some bells and whistles on it. Uh, but what a bike. What a bike. This could very well knock off my favourite German friend from the top spot. So I think we need to do some kind of back-to-back -back test coming up. Uh, but this... I mean, if there's any criticisms of this, it's probably just really stupid things. Like I don't like the way these bolts sit in here in the cockpit, but it's really, and the, I don't like the feel of the grips, but you know, once you get down to that, that type of nitty gritty inane stuff, which doesn't really matter, you know, you've got a great bike. So, you know, well done, well done Ducati. Bellissimo. See, cut, perfecto. Ah, all right, steady on, steady on, steady on. There's a lot of goats. I hate goat's cheese. Back to the hotel now along this absolutely stunning coast road. I'm, I'm trying to look where I'm going here, but it's not that easy. After what's been a, a fantastic day. I mean, this bike is pretty hard to fault. Uh, there's just a few minor things. I, I don't particularly like there's something about the cockpit which seems a bit cheap. I don't know what it is. And um, the dashboard wobbles around quite a lot. Uh, but there is, you can actually adjust the dashboard, I've just noticed, into two different angles. So if you're stood up or sat down, which is a good feature. And I think the damping mechanism makes the dash wobble a bit when you're bogged down. And that leads me on to the, probably the, the most critical point 
the most negative about the bike is that this superbike engine just below sort of 4000 it just it just sort of wobbles and and farts around a bit too much for me um it feels like it just feels like you're, you're in the wrong gear so you always want to rev the bike which is no problem like that's just how the bike wants to be ridden is is in the revs but after a long day in the saddle i can imagine that having to ride it in the revs a lot it's just more tiring um it's definitely more sporty obviously and it is a ducati so i, I can kind of forgive it and it's got a super bike engine in it don't forget so it's just a characteristic of that bike and comparing it to the competition they're a lot smoother lower down it's, i mean it pulls it doesn't bog down it's got power but it just hang on, well let's let's go into it i'll show you it's just kind of chuggy you know bugger, bugger, bugger. and i mean they've always been a bit like that Ducatis, but it's particularly noticeable Whee! see it's just a bit a bit bah, 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 bah. And that's where, if you want a long touring bike, it's kind of where you want it to live. So instead, you then just start revving the shit out of it, which is fantastic, because it's, it's an incredible performance bike. But So I suppose that could be construed as a negative, just that the, the characteristic of this engine does not like, particularly like being ridden at low RPM. Uh, and then the other things are just really minor, like a couple of bolts. There's a, a heated, sweet, heated seat, uh, switch a pillion heated seat switch which sometimes if you sit up and down a bit too quick on the bike you can bang your coccyx on it which is quite uncomfortable um, but they're really I mean you're, I'm really clutching at straws to to find fault with it um, the only thing we haven't been able to test is motorway type uh, long long day in the saddle riding boring ride technology uh, the rest of it is bang on can't fault it it's just whether it's too intense for <laughs> for a uh, a touring chill out motorcycle but you can't have everything right and why would you want to when it's as good as this bellissimo yeah sardinia is a banging place to ride so arrivederci